Hello everybody, welcome to Latest Worlds is EZT livestream. Tonight is going to be the first episode, because last week was episode zero, of what we're going to be calling the Joyous EZT. Tonight we are going to start actually making a ZZT game together as a group. Um, hopefully everybody here has everything installed as needed. You should have a copy of ZZT, a copy of Zeta, and a copy of KevEdit. If you didn't, then you very, very quickly should start getting those. And earlier, I made a tweet with all the relevant links, and I will dump that in chat just in case. And I probably should have linked that pre stream, but sure. Don't worry, it's like three things and it takes not even a minute to get everything set up. So let's, uh, I guess let's just get started. If you pop open CavEdit, you'll start off with this lovely blank screen. This is our title screen. We've got a player in a corner and an empty canvas that we can put whatever we like on. Again, arrow keys move around. You can hold Alt and move around much faster. And if you're like me, I like my custom pattern bar here towards the lower right. I like to reduce it in size by one with the less than key and lock it with slash. That way things don't get added in here automatically. That's a personal preference by all means. Set it up however you like. So the first question is what the heck are we going to make? I want us to do something very simple with limited amounts of programming down the line. We'll probably have no programming, or maybe like one thing tonight. But this is our title screen, and the first thing we should do is save our world. So we have something. Call it whatever you like. It's usually something relevant to the name of your game. I'm just going to call it Joy for this series. And let's start brainstorming some ideas. Well... I already know what I intend to do, kind of. But the nice thing about ZZT is you can make pretty much whatever you like. It's extremely abstract. I mean, we're this little smiley guy here. We start off with our title screen. Let's go ahead. Let's just write down a title. If you have one in mind, go for it. You can do this the easiest way. It's just F4 for text mode, and then you can just start typing. And backspace out as well. Alternatively, it's far more popular, is to, you know, actually draw some big old letters. So I'm just going to call this Joy for now, because I actually don't have a name in mind. So tab to turn on drawing, we'll just start moving around. And one thing you learn in ZZT is it's very difficult to do good letters. That's not very J-like. That's a J. That's an O. See, I used four characters. I used four tiles wide for these letters, but now it's off-centered. But this is my beautiful work of art. I am not good at graphics. I can do better than this, but we have more important things to do. S to save, enter to confirm the file name, Y to overwrite. You'll be doing that a lot, and you can just do it pretty quickly. You can open up our color dialog with K, mix it up a little. Let's 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 do this whole thing. Let's write Joy of ZZT here. Do our O in cyan. Hit P to change our pattern. We'll do some normal walls here. This, this is art. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
Give us some blue. And I don't have a lot of room to the side, so I'm going to use shift and the arrow keys to make a selection. Gotta make sure I pick something empty in my pattern here with P, because I don't want there to be something replacing these tiles, I just want empty spaces. Control X and we'll cut it, Control V and we'll paste it. Now we can move it around, give ourselves more room. You can't get rid of a player, so if you start moving it through the player, the player is going to get priority. A reminder, you can just use the P key to cycle through the patterns. The number of keys will jump to that spot on the buffer, and zero will jump to empty. Capital P will go backwards, but in my case, nine is the last thing on my buffer, and then P will take me to the beginning a lot faster. So going back to text mode, uh, Kevet doesn't have a native screen cap, you have to just use print screen with that. A Zeta does with F12, so actually if you did want to take a screenshot, I'm going to write my name here in text in the corner. I'll save, I'll switch over to Zeta. Hit W to pop open the world list, find my world, hit enter, there it is. And you can press F12 there, and that'll get you a nice little screenshot. You can hit P to play it, which won't get you very far, because it's a title screen with nothing on it. But you can run around. So congratulations, you already have a game with movement and collision. You're already farther than most indie games get. Back to our editor, we're going to start our game proper here a bit. Hit the B key, open up the board menu, go to add a new board. And I want to do something vaguely in the style of older games, so we're just going to call this a hub. We get ourselves a nice new blank board. We can cycle through them with page up and page down, or you know, use the B key for the menu again. Move to the center, roughly. Hit F1 to open the item menu. And Z to place our player there. And there we go. We've got a whole open world. So unfortunately you can't perfectly center it because it's 60 tiles wide. But it's... 25 tall, so you can at least center vertically if you if you care that much. I just honestly eyeballed it, so 31, 13, that's roughly, that's close enough. So it helps to obviously to have an idea for what kind of a game you're making instead of just going in completely blind and, I mean, you can do whatever you like here. You can do this as a sci-fi game, you can have it just take place in a town, it's be medieval fantasy, Lord of the Rings. It's going to be this, this little smiley guy. It's going to be man, woman, child, animal, vegetable, mineral, spaceship, giant mech, cowboy. Whatever you like, really. So I'm going to pop open our color menu again, and I kind of want to go for sci-fi. I know it's, it's a bit overdone, but it's pretty straightforward. So I can absolutely be a dragon. Well, actually, well, you know what? We're going to do a sci-fi game. I'm going to do a sci-fi game. Please do whatever theme you like, because 
this is going to be not this is going to be easily adaptable to whatever whatever you'd like it to be. If I'm going to try and avoid uh, nothing but grays that a lot of ZZT sci-fi games kind of settle in on. This will take place on Mars. So I'm going to start sort of drawing up a bit of a hub world here. This is going to be very sort of reminiscent of, of town. I'm just going to kind of corral off a couple of sections here. They don't have to be regular. They don't have to line up perfectly. They can, of course. Let's just break up a few segments. And, you know, just for the heck of it, let's do something a little different on the right here. And we'll have two paths going to the right. That's a bit too irregular for my taste, so I will smooth this out somewhat. And use tab again to just start drawing these lines really fast. You can hold alt to jump and draw a whole bunch at once. Just alt tabbed. Delete key will easily erase things. There is no undo. You are kind of at the mercy of whatever it is you did. And if you do find yourself alt-tabbing between Zeta and KevEdit a lot, sometimes the draw key, since you're hitting tab, will kind of get stuck on. So I try to make a habit of saving pretty much every time before I alt-tab just to be safe. So let's see. Here we are on Mars, in my case. Perhaps you're in a desert, or on the beach, or in a mountain or a cave in your game. We use the F key to do a little flood fill. I'm gonna do a few things here. Welcome to Mars! But then that's not very colorful and not much to look at. So let's do a little more drawing. What do we got on Mars? We've got Martian trees, which are absolutely not green. They are purple. Actually, they're gonna be they're gonna be dark purple. Let's do a little bit. Let's get some special colors in here. So we'll pick up some dark purple here. How do you draw a tree? You do that. And then we'll have our trunk. That's a tree. That tree's trunk is a little too tall for my tastes. We'll go back to purple and shrink that down a little. Now it's a tree. We can copy and paste a few of these again. We'll highlight with shift and the arrow keys. Control C, Control V. You can draw non-rectangular shapes and copy and paste like just the tree characters and if you want to really get get nice about it, but I'm just going to clean them up in post-production here. A few trees. That's looking a little better. There's, there's something to catch your interest. And it wasn't really intentional, but I did put them all on the left side here, so maybe I'll just have a forest to the left. Now I could pop open the color menu, switch back to red, go back to solid walls, but I'm going to jump with one to my pattern buffer, the custom area here. I'll just pick one of these tiles and I'll just hit insert over it. Uh, if you have the pattern buffer unlocked, you can just hit enter over it, that'll do the same thing, but then it'll also start like scrolling things, which I don't care for. Ugh. So let's clean this up a little. rid of this excess here. Okay. 
We also, of course, need a goal for our game. Now, with with town, that goal is get some purple keys and go to a palace. With Cannibal Island, which we saw a few weeks ago, it was find ruby keys and go find a secret submarine underground. And I kind of want to just stick to that theme. Man, I was about to say, like, oh, we could have, like, a spaceship that needs repairs, but then I realized that's just the first Commander Keen game. Oh, by all means, make a Commander Keen game in ZZT. Nobody's gonna stop you. Bethesda can't do anything. But I'll try and come up with something a little different for mine. But for the time being, we're gonna just start here. And... I'm gonna go with the left since I started decorating that a little bit with these trees. And let's give the player some supplies, because the focus for tonight, I want us to make sort of an action board. So I actually have a couple other... Oh, no, I didn't copy them. Never mind. They're in a different folder. That's not helpful either. There's several layers down. Going to some default CZT worlds here that everybody's got. We've all got town, assuming you didn't delete it. So we got forest, like these are just some ideas, this is what an action board could look like. Bug maze is pretty iconic. There's things to shoot, a goal to collect, in this case a bunch of blue keys, and an exit for it. It's a prison. There's a, there's a lot of different elements. ZZT is, offers a lot for basic action. It's kind of what it's designed for, really. Okay, going back to my proper ZZT project folder for this. Jump back in, save my game because I just obsessively want to hit save. And if we're going to have an action board, we're going to need some ammo. So let's see here. Ammo can be yellow. So ammo, it's an item. Unsurprisingly, F1 for the item menu, and you can see towards the very top, A for ammo. And that's going to use ZZT's default colored ammo. When you pick one of these up, you get five ammo. So, five shots. Not a ton, but it's something. You're almost certainly going to want more than one of these. Later on, we'll learn how to do objects and be able to just give the player an arbitrary amount of ammo with that. But... I don't want it to be this color, I want it to be yellow, I've decided. So I'm going to hit the D key here, and you can see in the lower right of KevEdit, that shuts off the default color mode. And now if I pop open the item menu, I can get pretty much whatever I like in yellow. I can grab it into the pattern buffer and then just draw away a little bit. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 45, 50, 55 ammo. That's plenty, most likely. I'm going to move it over a little bit more. By putting it more towards the edge here, I'm basically encouraging the player, hey, if you're picking up this ammo, you're probably just going to keep going left since you're already there. If I put it more towards the front here, they're more likely to pick up the ammo and consider, well, maybe I want to see what the split path on the right is. So I think for not ZZT so much as just game design in general, you should be thinking about what the player is going to be doing and where you're going to be guiding them, especially when I have this sort of setup here where there are five exits from this board. That's a lot of choices. So right now, left to me looks much more visually interesting, even though Wright's got this split path and this sort of angle here. But 
But we're not here to focus on the hub. We're here to make an action board. So I'm gonna once more save. I'm gonna open up board menu with B, add a new board. And let's see. What would be an action-y space board? What what would you fight on Mars? You might fight killer robots. So, first we get our blank board here. I titled it Killer Robots, obviously. We need to link up our boards in ZZT. We need something to let it know they're connected. So if we hit I to open up the board information, and at the very bottom here you can see all the board connections, as well as the board size there. That's something to watch out for if you start doing complicated things. You basically get about 20 kilobytes, which Looks like a lot when this empty board is 195 bytes. Let's actually see what the previous board is looking like right now. I again for the board menu. Yeah, so we're like still under a kilobyte. We're doing good. We got plenty of room to spare. And I mean, if you don't have any objects or anything, that it's really not something you're going to run into. As long as we're here... I'm going to want to pay attention to our coordinates, because we need to line up our passages. So I am here at coordinates 111 and through 116. So easy thing to do is just do this first. Just scroll all the way over. 11, I moved up a bit, so 111, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So this will connect with this. It's really, really annoying if these don't line up. If you do something like this, they'll just try running off the edge here. They won't be able to because they're blocked on the other side. Wait, did I not line that up right? Okay, no, I did that correctly. I did block it off here. Which is awful. So let's see, killer robot board. Well, we're gonna do our action board here. Oh, actually, I almost forgot the most important thing. We didn't actually link our boards. Again, I for the board menu. Jump, hit up, I'll scroll right to the bottom. And pick board to the right, it'll be the hub. You'll note that you can't connect to the title screen. This isn't normally an issue because rarely do you actually play on the title screen. Why does it say? Huh. Well, look. well, that's neat. It says board to the north. I had found a bug in Kevet that's probably been there for 20 years. I'm going to pick hub. It's not a board to the north. It's a board to the east. Does it always say north? It always says north. Somebody file a bug report. So, let's go ahead. Let's save on this board real quick and jump into Zeta. I still had the title screen running. You can just straight up hit P. You don't need to reload the world. It'll go back to normal. Here we are on our second board. There we go. Board's connected. Grab our ammo. ZZT will always start you on the last board that you saved on, so when time comes to start publishing or doing like a full game test, you're going to want to save on what you want your starting board to be. It's a really common mistake and a lot of worlds on the museum were just saved on the wrong board. A second really common mistake is this. We connected our board on one side but not on the other. You have to actually connect them from both ends because CZT doesn't care how the boards are connected. You can have that board, that second killer robot board, connect to the east with an entirely different board than this one if you want. It's not a feature that usually gets used, but you can do it. So we're going to go back to Kevet and we're going to fix that right away. Two ways to do it. 
First and foremost, if we go back to our board menu, highlight the board link here, and hit the asterisk key. That's a reciprocate board links. So I believe, yes. So now if we go back to the hub board and open it, now it's linked. So that's just a shorter way to do it. As soon as you add the new board and make that first connection, just hit asterisk and there you go. They're connected both ways. Alternatively, you can just hit the exit, pick the exit, hit enter, manually select it on the list. Well, so let's see, I immediately said I wanted to avoid using gray, and I'm immediately tempted to use gray because I'm thinking robots and a robot factory. That's the stuff running through my head here for gameplay and the thematics. So we're doing an action board. There's a lot of things to consider. It would be very simple to just do a big old border like this. Pick a robot color. Turn off default color mode. Plop down a line. And ta-da! There's some killer robots. But that's horrible. That's horrible for a lot of reasons. Also, that's another thing. By all means, they may be lions in ZZT, but they can be aliens, they can be Martians, they can be dinosaurs, whatever you want them to be. I mean, the tigers have guns, so, you know, these aren't exactly grounded in realism. But we do want ugh, what we do want to consider is what our layout is actually going to be. What about this board is going to be a challenge for the player to overcome? What is their reward going to be? What is going to make this interesting and not just them holding down the fire key again at a big group of lines that are called robots? So I'm gonna change the structure of this room a little bit. I like my idea of it being a robot factory. So let's try this. Slap on temporary border here. So it's still a big giant room. So we're going to have to decide do we want this to be sort of an open space? Do we want this to be like a zigzag path? Do we want this to be a, a maze? I'm going to be fond of. So we're making a bit of a path here. I'm going to try and make sort of a circuit. So it's going to be a path. We'll add a branch or two. But we're going to basically make the player go in a big circle. So we're going to have to go down through here. And we're going to make them go into this area here, which will have a... A little bit more of a division here. Okay, so that's a little... It's got some structure to it. We'll figure this out as we go. I know it doesn't matter, but it's bugging me that the player's up top and not centered. Uh, actually, I should point out, it doesn't really matter where you put the player. It'll matter for testing purposes if we save the game and start here. We'll start where the player is, but... As soon as they walk off the edge on this board, they're going to appear on the right well, the right edge here. So basically, you just want to have, make sure the player is out of the way of everything else while you're making the board. So let's see. If I'm going to make them go in here, they're going to have to get something. And fortunately, ZZT provides keys and doors. Uh, keys are something... ZZT normally only gives you this, these first seven colors, which are not by any means first here. They're the first in ZZT's own editor. You can use the dark colors for keys, but if you use ones that are black, a black key, or a dark gray, which is light black, I guess, the ZZT doesn't normally have those keys, and they're going to be buggy and weird, so don't use that. 
Easiest thing to do, just stick with one of the seven bright colors here. So let's do three keys here. It's it's light black, it's dark gray. It matters in this case because light gray works, dark gray doesn't. Because light gray is actually dark white. Colors are weird and bad. But anyway, uh, plop down a couple of keys. Now ZZT again also only lets you carry one key of each color. So we can consider if we want to do something like this, there's going to be, that means three keys to collect, and we'll make a spot for some doors. Oh no, I made this, actually I'm going to make that tile, that hallway slightly wider here. Cut and paste this. Again, pick an empty tile so it gets replaced with empties. Do that. Back to normal walls. And I could put three green doors here. If I do that, then I'm committing the player. They're going to have to go in, go up here, grab a key. They can't pick up another, so they're going to have to go back and return here to open up a door. Then I'm going to have to run back in again, come back in here, grab another key, go back, open the second door, and do this a third time. Alternatively, we can just say, hey, that's stupid. Well, that's stupid for what I have in mind. It's not necessarily a bad call to make. Alternatively, though, we can just use three different colored keys. So I'm going to use, actually, red, green, and blue. We'll use our primary colors there. So now the player can go in here, and they can grab all three at once. And then once they have them all, they'll be able to just open up all the doors at once. There's going to be less backtracking. If you go with three keys of the same color and you want them to do backtracking, you should probably design your board around that. You can, by adding in things that will continue to be a challenge and not just enemies that get defeated and then just mean walking through cleared out empty space. So let's go ahead, I'm going to make myself our first challenge here. I'm going to put in a couple of spinning guns on the wall here. Let's pick a nice color. I'm going to make them red because they're bad. And I hit the wrong button. F2 for creature. That's, you know, where the spinning guns are, which is G for spinning gun. Kevin will just plop one of those down. If we hit enter, we can adjust its stats. There's going to be the intelligence. We saw these things back in demo last week. Intelligence will determine, basically, are they shooting randomly or are they shooting specifically at the player. I'm going to just keep that default firing rate, basically how often they're going to fire. Now ZZT, the normal editor, would limit everything to these 1 to 9 values. But Actually, I don't know why that's not a slider, but... You can just hit enter to change the value. So you can do something. Okay. So yeah, this one actually caps out at 127. Ah, that's why it's not a slider, because actually spinning guns are kind of weird. But long story short, you don't want a firing rate of 127. You want a nice low number. So I'm going to turn it down slightly lower from default. Turn it down to a 3. Projectile can be bullets, which are good, or stars, which are pretty bad. Stars are indestructible, they last forever. If you've watched any of these streams, you probably have seen me yell about stars. And yeah, we saw that weird 127 cap. That's because this, this top part here is the nice, pristine ZZT way of presenting data. Down here in advanced tweaking, which we're not gonna tweak, you can see actually throw stars, our data 2 is 131. Change it to bullets, it drops down to 3. Because the way ZZT determines if it's going to attack with bullets or with stars is based on whether firing rate is above or below 128. If we don't need to worry about that. If we're going to make it throw stars, we just set it to stars. Advanced tweaking is advanced tweaking. 
cycle is also going to be how fast these things respawn, basically. So every three game ticks, the player can move three spaces, and the spinning guns will get a chance to act. So I'm going to leave that default as well. That's, again, something you can't normally change with ZZT, that Kev at LSE change. So we're not even going to worry about that. So I'm going to hit insert, put this thing into my pattern buffer. Draw kind of a line here. Now, they will fire in all four directions if they're free in those four directions. So I'm going to lock off this wall here. And I have no idea if this is reasonable in difficulty. So I'm going to move my player with F1 and Z. Since you can only have one player normally, it'll just jump and put the player wherever you place them. I'm going to save, and I'm just going to test it out. Go back to ZZT and Zeta. Quit out of the game. B to play. Okay, and here we are. So let's see what these things look like in action. That's not too bad. It's a little, a little light um, firing, but we can consider we can either put some more creatures in if we like, or we can up those values because this doesn't seem too scary. I mean, again, if you've ever played like Mario Maker or something, you'll learn very quickly that it's a lot easier to make your it's a lot easier for the author than it is for the player, pretty much always. There's also the fact that you can just hug this bottom wall pretty much if, if the bullets will cooperate. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit too, so that's going to be on my notes. I'm going to quit out here, go back to Kev Edit. So. I thought it was a little light. I'm going to up the firing rate. Let's go. And you can see also on the sidebar, you don't need to hit enter. You can just use plus. Can he use plus and minus? OK, well, it says you can use plus and minus or the arrows, but for whatever reason, you apparently can't on this. So OK, well, let's, I'm going to try five. And I'm also going to do this. No, I don't like that. I want to do something so you can't just hug the bottom. Hmm. Well, I'll leave it for now. So I've bumped up the firing rate. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, I like that. That looked reasonably challenging. Are y'all following along okay? I've been just talking to myself without, I mean, I've been reading chat, but not like super focused. Are y'all doing good here? All right, cool. So let's see. Well, I put down my keys. I as well get my doors in place here. So doors in ZZT, not the best visually. I'm going to go ahead. Here's a blue door. I actually use the C key for colors for once instead of K, because I'm only cycling through four grounds. And those are our three doors, as ZZT would normally make them. I mean, they work. They're fine. And I think there's enough contrast that you can kind of tell, yes, this is blue, green, and red. Well, if you look at that horrible mess, I've got purple, red, and yellow doors, and it's a lot harder to tell what you're looking at. 
they are just, it's not a friendly color combination that ZZT wants you to do. And it's just asking to confuse players. I mean, in this case, it wouldn't really be a big deal because you're getting these three keys right here. You're opening these three doors right here. But if you had something like a door here that was like supposed to be a shortcut to the back of my factory of killer robots, then the player might run all the way over here and realize, oh, that's not a red door, that's a purple door or something. It's not good. So I, I really want to stress for doors. Shut off the default color mode with D. Pick something like bright blue on dark blue. And that is very clearly a blue door. This would very clearly be purple, red, and yellow. It's so much easier to read. It's, it's just really something to consider. So I'm going to clear out this horrible mess of doors. Oops. I stopped holding shift for a second so you can see an irregular selection. Get the rest here. Light, light on dark of the key color is probably the smartest way to do it. And I'm actually not sure offhand, I believe, like this would still count as a blue door with dark blue. I think it just goes by the foreground color. Let me test that. Let's see. Bright blue on dark red. Control T here opens up our tile information. Let me just check in ZZT real fast. So that's a red door. So because ZZT only expects you to be using seven colors, yeah, it is the background color. So you want to use this for a blue door, this whole section here. And as I mentioned last week, all this entire right half, that's all going to be blinking. And you can shut off blinking in Zeta and actually have bright colored backgrounds and things. But let's, I just want to, let's just avoid that for, for the time being and just stick with this left half. Go back to our colorblind approved doors here. I have blue, green, and red. Is there a way to eyedropper a tile into your current pattern and color settings? Uh, other than putting it into your pattern buffer. Yeah, uh, if you turn off default, so let's see here. If I put my green key in here, I've got my default colors set to off, and I pick yellow on dark blue, and I press space. Now it's going to use those colors. It's going to go with whatever the heck color I have set, and not the colors of what's in the buffer. So that's an easy way to change the colors of things. Alternatively, if you only have like one thing you need to change the color of, like here, I'll put my second door here. I need to make this a green door. You can just hit control T. And then you can hit color on here and just pick from that. Draw more of a tile that's already on the board. Everything you draw is going to be either on the buffer or picked out of a menu. So that's again one of the reasons why I like the locked buffer and setting it 0 to 9 because it makes it quick to jump around to when I can just hit 9 and then P to jump back to solid walls. So let's see, got two doors, we need one more door, the red one. That is not red. So there we go. There's something visually distinct here. 
and I put my little shortcut here that I didn't actually want. So let's see. Next up, we want to put some creatures in here, so we're not just running past some guns. Let's switch to a sensible color and open up our creature menu. So here's what we've got. You've got bears that only move when you're in or near alignment with them, depending on their sensitivity. You got ruffians that run around and then stop, basically in straight lines. Slimes, probably not a good fit for here because they just spread breakable walls. Sharks, definitely not a good fit here because there's no water. We've seen our spinning guns. Lions are our generic moving around enemy. Tigers are pretty much the same thing, but they also shoot. New centipedes, if you want uh, something that's a bit lengthier, you can place a head and then connect some segments to it. ZZT is fairly smart about it. Like in this case, I'm confident that this is the way the centipede would start moving. But if you do weird stuff like this, I have no idea what's going to happen. If there's ever just an isolated segment, it'll turn into a head. So while this probably won't turn into a single centipede, it will, you know, turn into multiple enemies at least. And again, you want to think about how these things are going to interact with other things on the board. The spinning guns are going to shoot bullets, but those bullets will not harm creatures, so you don't have to worry about that. But you could try and do things with centipede. Maybe you want to do centipedes and use it as a sort of a shield. If you do this, maybe when it's moving vertically, that can sort of block off shots. Maybe you want to specifically avoid that. Yeah, kind of streamline that a little bit. So I'm going to leave this upper area mostly clear. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a sort of an in and an out. I'm going to sort of corral these sections off a little more. Hello. We're going to place some transporters here. We'll make it a long walk, so you have to go all the way across here. F3, and then T for transporter. By default, I guess they point north. That's not what I want here. I want to hit enter to open up its stats. And you can just hit enter, and it'll cycle through the normal values. North, south, east, west, and idle, which is pointless, but it's an option. So I'm going to make this one point south, put it in the buffer, place another, make this one north. So now the player has to enter through here, and they have to exit through there. This will keep any enemies that we put in here from spilling out, so I don't have to worry now about enemies and these spinning guns. I'm going to actually slide this over, because I don't like the idea of having the player have to run directly against the spinning guns. So do this here. And actually, just to sort of encourage or discourage that, I'm going to actually place some water. And that's going to be this fourth tile here. It's in the default buffer. You don't need to open up the terrain menu, but you can do that. If you do it that way, then you get ZZT's colored water, unless you mess around with the default color settings. And actually, this blends in a little much. Let's do blue. Actually, I can just hit F to do a flood fill and replace all of it at once. And I gotta put my transporters back because I accidentally erased them in the buffer. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So now, player can't get too close to the guns. Just, they'll just be physically blocked by water, but bullets can travel over it just fine. And I'm going to start considering some enemies here. So now, 
some things to consider. Since we did put transporters here, or I did at least, when the player goes through, they're going to immediately be placed here. If Let's make this our hypothetical scenario. Make a white line by shutting off default colors. So in this case, if the player goes south through the transporter, they won't be hurt. They will push the line out of the way, which is good. Actually, Applesauce has a smart suggestion here. Make the tile two tiles wide so they don't walk past it. And as you can see, my default color is screwing me up again. That also looks a little nicer, to me at least. Anyway, just take the transport here. It'll push the line out of the way. If this situation sort of occurs, where all the lines are kind of bunched up like this, then I believe the player will transport and get hurt, because there's nothing to push. Let me double check. I'm going to save my game, switch back to Zeta. And you can take a transporter while paused like this. Okay, well, I kind of just erased a line from existence. I'm not a fan of that either, but I am paused here, and I'm going to have to move in and get hurt. Let's see what happens. So there's four lines remaining, and I'm at 90 health. Not good. Switching back. So, huh, that actually didn't hurt you. Well, good. I don't want the player getting hurt for these transporters. But you do have to consider lions here have an intelligence value, and they're just going to be moving while the board's running. So the player's going to start here, and any lions are going to have plenty of time to move around. If we set their intelligence to something high, they're going to start congregating over against this wall, and as the player moves around, they'll start moving towards the transporters. That might be good. I think that would actually work out for the best. Because while I don't want the transporter to be blocked, I think that's probably a bit better than if I just let them sort of wander around randomly. So I'm going to keep their intelligence fairly high. And of course, one thing here is how many lines do we want? Because it can be up to that many, which is bad. I'm going to put five lines. So the player is going to have to do some shooting here because it's probably a bit too tight to try and dodge everything and grab that key and get out of there safely. And you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I still don't like... I'm still not a fan of the fact that you don't need to go up here. So actually, no, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to encourage the player to go up here. I'm going to put some rewards. I'm going to put a couple of gems up top. So F1 and G for gems. So I'll give him a couple of gems here. So now, they, now they're going to want to go up top. But even that's a bit easy. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually mirror this. We're going to have a lot of spinning guns. And actually, I am now definitely going to turn down the firing rate a lot. And the intelligence a little. Let's see what this looks like for now. Put our player here so they can run into this horrible gauntlet. Go back to ZZT. I did block my transport. I just want to see what the spinning guns look like like this. Yeah, this is... I mean, I'm going to say this is on the difficult side, but not impossibly so. And again, gems give health, but only one. So it's, it's a lot of risk right now for very little reward. That's not too terrible. I'm going to tone it down a little more, though. Go back to Zeta. Or, sorry, go back to Kevedit.
too many tigers. Yes, that's that's an easy mistake. Tigers are definitely one of the tougher enemies. So let me mirror this a bit how we had it. Two tiles of water. Just for good measure, actually, what color do they use? Yellow ammo. I'll be consistent. I'll add a little bit of ammo to pick up. Give the player something else to do other than just grab the keys and run. It's definitely ammo management is definitely something you want to consider. And it's a bit tough to test when your game is incomplete, and it's even more difficult to test when we're setting up a game that starts like this, and they can go wherever they like. If you want, you could absolutely make your game linear, and just to have it so our reward for finishing this board can be a key, and then that key can open up another door here, and you just follow along on a set path, that's fine. But... If you do the open route, then you do have to consider the fact that we don't know what the player's going to have here. They might have done all these other paths, and they might be really low on health, in which case this might be really difficult instead of you know a more reasonable challenge. Other things we haven't touched, if we go into the board menu, you can... I mean, you can make the room dark if you want to really challenge. You want to make these challenging and start adding in some torches. I'm going to go with no for that, at least for now. We'll try dark rooms at a different time. Uh, Re-enter when zapped. That could be good, actually. If we turn that on, then when they get shot by a bullet or hit by a lion slash killer robot, they'll be warped back to where they entered the board from. But then you also have to consider what was one of the original things we were talking about, which means that they're going to have to go on this long walk again. So maybe we don't want that, at least with this structure. But if you're just, if you're not gonna make them run down a long hallway, that might be something worth considering. You can always do a time limit and say, hey, you've got 60 seconds or however much. You actually go pretty high with that. I think you get the full 32,000. Yes, so you can give them that many seconds, which is plenty. I think that's like three hours there. So that might be a little bit too plenty. Set it back to zero to make it infinite. That'll make them have to move quickly. Best used with re-enter when zapped, because otherwise they just lose health and keep on going. And then there's also the maximum shots. Right now our player can just fire as much as they want. You can set that to zero, and then the player can't shoot, and then they have to dodge all these killer robots. That could be tough. Again, depends on what you're going for, what kind of difficulty you want. And, I mean, you could also just reduce it. Pretty much nobody ever uses anything other than default zero or one shot. But you can do... But you can do other values if you want to give them, like, five shots. I'm going to try with one. We'll run with that for a little bit once we start actually testing with ammo. Well, so we mentioned here in chat there's something I was going to kind of... Oh, yeah. Does running out of time only trigger when you have ten time left? Yes. So you'll only see that if the time... I think actually if you set it to 10 directly, you'll just immediately see that you're running out of time. I'm going to go back to infinite. So we've got this here. We've got these two here. So in this case, for this section, I'm going to go with some ruffians. I'm going to make them green. Green ruffians. These are the Martians who run the robot factory. Rest time. We'll set them, make them a little smarter and a little slower to move. Can't seem to set, yeah, set maximum shots between 1 and 10. You just hit there, 4. You do have to backspace out the old value. Ah, okay. If actually, there are keyboard controls here, you can quickly set things with left and right to increase it by up to by 10 at a time. But uh, if you hit enter, then you could just backspace out and type in whatever amount you want. 
So I'm going to place a couple of ruffians here. Uh, actually, one other thing worth doing, I think. I can move this line down. I mentioned the issues with transporters sort of being blocked by creatures. So one thing we can do to sort of get away to get away from that issue is we can use forest. So I'm gonna pick a weird what color do we make our trees? They are purple and cyan. So let's pick that color specifically. Shut off default color mode, open up the terrain, and forest. And that's actually inverted because the forest character is the water character. Let's try flip our colors. Dark cyan on dark purple and place forest. That's a bit better. So if we place forest here, they'll just clear the forest. Will they clear the forest? I actually want to double check that you can take a transporter onto a forest. No, you can't. We saw that in Cannibal Isle. So we can't do that. We can do this. Forest does block transporters. Do not do what I said originally. Do this. And now you can at least safely take the transporter, and then once you break through the forest by stepping onto it, then you'll be able to sort of engage the enemy on your own terms here. We don't really need it for the exit, we only need it for the entrance. So this way it's a bit more a bit more nice to the player, especially since they're gonna have spinning guns shooting at them, and they probably don't want to deal with that. So actually, let's do this also. Why is that four wide and this is three? See, these are inconsistent sizes. And I, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but I do like I do like my structures to look, to sort of match. So there we go. And now I'm making it so that they do have to cut in front of these spinning guns. So now there's a bit more point to all of this. Uh, I mean, I, I purposely made these bright instead of dark. That was just me picking colors. Also, let's see, one more thing I might like to do. Since the player is going to have to get through... I don't know. No, this is fine. I was considering putting some boulders to block off the spinning guns after you go through a section. Oh no, no, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do it like this. We're gonna go in here, get ourselves a purple boulder. So F3 for terrain, O for boulder. It's about halfway down the list, a little less. One of those, and one of those here. So now we also create this situation where player enters this board, they see this horrible mess, they start heading up here to get the keys. They could run up and grab these gems and then start getting shot at by spinning guns. But if they pay close attention, they can see that they've got some boulders here and they can push them out and up to here and block the spinning guns and then not have to worry about that with and just get the gems freely. So if the player's observant, then they get to be safe. So I think this sort of inner area is pretty decent for now. Let's actually go back to our first board, move the player towards the ammo, and I'm going to actually try and play this. Let's get the three keys and open the three doors. Fifty-five ammo is a lot for like ten creatures, so we're definitely good there. There we go, this is working out. Oh no! All the times to forget to switch. Well, at least I did that little duplicate, so I guess you could, you could watch on the picture in picture. There we go. 
I like that. That's good. Now my ruffian's kind of all bunched up here. Whoa. That guy. Ruffian and or alien. So they're doing a pretty solid job of chasing me down. Oh. I actually completely forgot that I had that shot limit of one. It didn't really make much of a difference since it took to that point before I noticed. Since the the left pocket there, the, it's so constrained, it's a lot it's a lot more difficult to miss. No, the spinning guns creatures can't destroy things with their bullets. So we're completely safe here. I forgot to push out my boulder, but that's fine. Now I've got my three keys. There we go. That's some that's some progress. That's a playable board here. Not perfect. Let's go back. So the one thing I didn't like was that these ruffians kind of ended up bunching up in the corner because I did this section first, and that's because their intelligence was high. So they're always going to try to run towards the player. The boulder here and there, technically it's extra safety for the player, but yeah, if you push them out here, and then you can get your gems completely safe. I mean, you can get most of them completely safe by just going up top here. Here, let's do this. Get. There we go. So now, we'll put two more guns here. One more gun, we'll center it. So there we go. So now you're in danger at all times. And isn't that the ideal? So I think I'm finally satisfied with this area up here. These ruffians, I'm going to tone down the intelligence. I'm going to actually make them completely dumb. They're just going to kind of run around pretty haphazardly. These are not the brightest Martians. Okay. So I think if I play through this again, I'll do it one more time. This time I will make sure my screen is switched. Yeah, you can see the ruffians are just kind of doing their own thing now, while the lions are heading towards the corner because they really want to get to me. And again, since the lions bunch up, it's easy to sort of just shoot them one after the other like that. With the ruffians, that's going to be tougher because they're not going to... Wow, I did that very badly. They're not going to group up as much. And that spinning gun in the middle that I place is kind of a... not doing much of anything. Wow, I'm doing much worse this time. <laughs> okay, this this I like a lot better, though, with our green ruffian aliens. I should also point out that there are alternate ZZT executables that have been hacked to remove a lot of messages like your like path cleared through forest and your way is blocked by water. I kind of like just having them around even if it's not appropriate for the context of the game, but it's fine here. Okay, that's a lot better I think. Plus 70 health, like I, I took damage, I struggled, I persevered. I again forgot to push out the second boulder. So I'm going to go back to Kev at it. I'm going to actually move that second boulder. Because I keep forgetting about it, so that's going to encourage me a bit more next time. So let's fix up this sort of hallway a bit more. Let's add a bit more depth to these walls. I'm gonna... Let's do it like this. 
start off like this. Turn them all into solids. And then I'm gonna put stuff to the right here a little bit. And look at that! Look at that amazing 3D. Actually, no, because I want these to line up properly. Well, I'll just demonstrate it as a thing. A lot of games will do a sort of fake depth effect by basically sort of adding this extra layer of walls to another wall. And I mean, you can really go complete the effect. I really don't want to redo these entire inner rooms just to do that. But I mean, you can see it's definitely pops out a bit more. Again, that's an aesthetic thing. It doesn't matter for gameplay. It's just a thicker wall. I mean, you can just do that and it would be flat but same gameplay wise so I'm gonna change my mind on that it does look good it's a really common thing but my one thing issue here is if I do that then I have to actually adjust sort of my how my hub connects and if I'm inconsistent too like I'm not doing it on here do I want to do it on this board too but, I mean that's our that's like your basic sort of ZZT fade where you do solid, normal, breakable, water. I could adjust the wall in the factory up. Yes, I don't know why I didn't just think to do that. But I really don't want to do it inside here. And it looks kind of weird if you only have this portion and not this portion, to me at least. But another thing you have to consider when you are doing the graphical work in ZZT is that these things still have properties. So I mean, I was using normal walls there, you can use the breakable ones here, and I mean, hey, that looks good too, but now they're breakable walls and you can just shoot them and just start breaking them apart. And enemies can start shooting them, those will break just fine. So you do have to consider that. Same thing, water, I mean, it's still going to be water, water will still go over it. Bullets will still travel over it, and then if you bump into it, of course, you get your little waves blocked by water message and sound effects, which, if you're not using a custom executable, that's going to be a thing. So let's see. I'm going to clear this out, because I've decided not to bother with that. And I'm going to go back to the normal walls because I think that looked a little nicer. Now let's try... So we got a whole lot of dead space here. Nothing really happens on this board until you get to the center area. So we got to figure out something to do here. Now one thing we could do is we can move all this ammo here and place it here instead since I have this board closed off. And then the trade-off is, if there's no ammo here, the player is not really going to expect, necessarily, that they're going to be going to an action board, which is fine. It's a matter of do we want to sort of hint at that or not. We could, of course, put more ammo and just have it on both boards, but we've already got more than enough ammo, and we're giving them more in here. So let's make this robot factory a bit more robot factory like we can encourage some fast movement even without a time limit by using a duplicator so let's make a few let's make a little duplicator where to put it where to put it Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it up here. Duplicators. We'll actually make something gray. Shut off default colors. F1 for items, U for duplicator. Open up its stats. So it says direction north, and that is the direction of the thing that you're going to be copying. If you open a duplicator in ZZT's editor, it'll say source direction, which is a lot less ambiguous. And just like with our transporters, we can do north, south, east, west, and idle. We can set a duplication rate. And I don't want this board to become like a mess of lines. So I'm gonna 
keep these pretty slow. And I don't want to do a ton of these. Let's just do two on the inside here. Fill up our walls. Place some lions. Now, one thing to consider is we could leave it sort of like this, and then these lines will be wandering around, and they might not be duplicated. Which, you know, we, depending on how many we end up getting, may or may not be a good thing. I'm going to close it off and just ensure that we always are duplicating lines here. So this is going to encourage the player to move quickly, so they don't get overwhelmed. This area is going to be a bit more difficult too because they're going to be shooting upwards and I have it still set to one bullet per screen and that's going to be a long way to miss if you fire down here and that bullet doesn't hit anything. That's going to be a big wait. So I'm going to break it up a little bit. A couple of boulders. Crates. That's awesome. Now let's let's go all out on these crates. They're going to be brown crates. So F3 for terrains, O for boulder. Bismuth, are you talking about like these colors here? Walls with darker and lighter blocks. Without the darker blocks breaking. Oh, oh, you mean for like that shading effect. So, yeah, actually, text is a way to do that, but that's only going to work with white. Let's actually. Yeah, I mean, I'll show that off while, while we're on the subject. So, I'm going to go ahead to white here. And just type whatever, but. If you're in text mode with F4, and you hit Control A, that'll bring up the whole character list. So here it is. Here's every graphic in ZZT. You got smiley face, letter, accented letter, upside down exclamation point, Greek. I mean, what more could you need? But yes, you could basically sort of spoof things and, you know, now, text is a solid wall, but this sure looks like a white breakable, and you can sort of do that effect. You could also do it with objects, but as, if we look in the top right corner, we are at 33 of 150 objects on this board, so we probably don't actually have enough room to line the bottoms of every wall. You can't change the foreground color of text. Text is sort of like hard-coded. It's always going to be a white foreground color, and then one of seven background colors, depending on whether it's blue text, green text. It's kind of just a helpful trick to keep stat elements down. I mean, there's games, Commodore's, shoot, what's it called? Angelus Finale. That game is entirely done in white, specifically so he can do all his graphics with text and not worry about object limits, which gives it a really unique look. But we're not going to work on that. We're going to give the player a couple of boulders here, our crates, which, as mentioned in chat, you can't actually block them. If you do this, when the duplicator processes, it'll just push these out of the way. But I don't want them so much to block the duplicators as much as I want them to let the player miss a shot and not have to wait several seconds before they can play on, or before they can fire another bullet. There we go. You have to push through the crates to, to get out of here. There's a lot of things that are sort of weird. I don't think they can... I don't know, I guess, yeah, actually, if I go completely. If you completely fill this top area. Never mind, yeah, let's not do that many. Do not want them to softlock. 
And in fact, I'm going to open this up a little more to make that. So they kind of really have to go out of their way to break things. There's a lot of things with duplicators and ZZT that will crash, but creatures are fine. So our killer robots are good here. So let me go back. Okay, these were highly intelligent killer robots. Just a couple more. There's something to do here. So now these are all highly intelligent, so they're really going to start clustering down here, which is another. Oops, I did mute myself. Oops, and I saved with a different file name. I don't know where I muted myself. But I put down a bunch more boulders. They'll block shots, they'll block lions from getting out of here because they're all going to be flowing generally downward, since that's where the player is going to be spending a lot of their time, in this lower part here. So hopefully that should make things run a little more smoothly. Yeah, so they're going to be moving south, basically, while the player's down here a lot. This might actually be too many boulders. I'll worry about that when we do some more testing. Because let's get this area filled out. Because I kind of skipped over the very first portion of this of this room. Let's do the important classic ZZT thing and label our board. There we go. Now we now we're presenting our theme. A lot of ZZT games that are early on will kind of really go a little too far. They'll like put text here saying robots, and they'll put text here saying aliens, and they'll put text here saying security gun, and it just kind of clutters up the board a lot. But I think just like naming a board like this, something a bit more light is fine. Consider again, like, is this information pertinent? And I mean, sure, we don't need to know what this is, but it just adds a little more to this world to make it the Martian Robot Factory. Okay, so we gotta figure out what are we doing with the very beginning still. So I mean it's sort of a long walk, which for one thing that means the duplicators get even more time, which I'm going to say is a good thing. But what I want is something to do here. I'm really tempted to just like put sort of decorative objects or something. Actually, you know what? We can do that without code. Let's put some weird alien statues. And I want to differentiate them from the actual aliens. Robot parts. Yeah, we'll put, actually, we'll do that. We'll put a little pile of scrap robot parts in the corner here. So we've been using white, which honestly isn't going to look... Well, no, I'm going to keep using white. And we'll just put some robot parts down. So F2 for creatures, O for objects. That's going to put down an object. Now if we hit enter, this, you know, where we can edit its code and all this other stuff. And none of this matters because we're just using it as a decoration. The only thing we care about is the character, which you can cycle with the arrows if you're really fluent in your ASCII, or you can just hit enter and we'll bring up that same old list with all the characters. Actually, let's do this. I'll make it look like that. Now, using white like this, we can save on our object limit. You can see it going up like this. We could do what we were showing off with text, hit F4, Control A, and even remember the character. We can do it like this, and then we can put as many as we want and not have to worry about that limit. 
But these are going to be like the scrap robots, the broken parts and junk bins. So I'm going to actually change them to being dark gray. We'll get some that look a bit more complete. We'll do, let's see, what kind of parts? We'll go some light gray, we'll do some shading here. What kind of parts sort of make up this character? Kind of got some little, little legs. So let's see. We can do like one of these guys. Is there a good one that's got like both? Maybe like this. Let's see, put down something a bit more circular. Kind of a mess. Not a fan of it, but it's something. It's filling up the board. And actually, let's be let's be cute about it. Let's actually have a trapped robot that still still functions. It's just trapped behind all this garbage, all these broken robots. If you actually want to be really fun about it, let's open it up at stats with enter. First of all, let's put its intelligence to low so it kind of moves aimlessly. Now let's actually adjust its cycle. Crank it up all the way to 10. Now let's actually go over and take a look. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see this line is cycle 10, and it is moving a lot more slowly than the other lines. We also see, like, yeah, they're really bunching up over there on the left. And we can see how fast our duplicator goes, which is pretty slow, but it's going to get plenty of cycles off. And we saved on the board that didn't have any ammo, so that's also a downside. You can cheat with the question mark key and type in ammo. That'll give us five. Do that a couple times so I can kind of keep going. Let's try this. Yeah, this is coming along. But I mean, we can see, again, since we have this whole top area clear, the lions are really heading that way, because they really want to get to me. I forgot to use that second boulder yet again. That boulder is just cursed. Let's see what this area plays like. They start bunching up at the door a little bit, but... Now, the good thing about them kind of corralling like this is if we really want to be reckless, you can just kind of crush them with the boulders. Which was a bit too reckless, because I kind of almost died doing that. So I think that still needs some tweaking. But most importantly, we can see this this poor, poor robot trying their best. So I want to, well, let's do transporters again. That's, we've got this sort of color theme going. So we can do that. We'll make them both one way. So the east here. So that enters this final area. Oh, that's actually a good idea. Since we can't actually shut off the duplicators with boulders since they just get pushed out of the way, we can push them out of the way something like this. Let's get some boulders, or not boulders, some pushers, that's a good color. Basically I want I want things to sort of contrast well. Like I want these bright transports to sort of stand out, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna try these here. Conveniently they already point to the north, but you know, like everything else we've seen so far, hit enter, 
start cycling through which direction I'm going to want to do sliders that point east and west. Can we break this? No, that'll be fine. So yeah, so now what the player will be able to do is push these out of the way, which will make the pushers go up, and they will block off the duplicator permanently. So that lets us shut that off, which is good. Actually, yeah, I bet they would look better in blue. So I'm going to put them into the pattern buffer, pick blue, shut off the default colors, and that'll replace them. There we go. So I think we got something good here. I'm mostly just not satisfied with these circles. These need better. Oh, the degree sign, that's a good one. That looks kind of robot-like. Much better. So there's our scrap heap. We're here on Mars. We've got we've got ammo. We've got robots. We've got alien Martians. We've got spinning guns. What about? I want something for here, but nothing too dangerous. Ah, here's what we'll do. We'll do some ricochets. That livens it up a little. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have some bullets that are going to bounce back and forth every time they hit these ricochets. Now, normally we'd have to do something like make an object shoot a bullet and then disappear and do all that. But KevEdit will let us actually just straight up place a bullet. So we're going to hit F2 and U for bullets. Now let's look at our bullet properties here. Direction north fired by creature. So we can change this between creature and player. And actually, actually now I'm really curious, because we have our shot limit of one, and these are technically player bullets. I know it won't let me fire any more bullets, but is it going to be weird with these? No. Okay. So that doesn't really matter. And we don't need to mess with player creature bullets. We're just going to put them back how we had it. Firing north, cycle one. So we're going to do this. Let's see what this looks like. So this is good. But a few things. This board is getting pretty noisy. The constant bouncing bullets, plus the duplicator noise. Not a fan of all of that at once. This is the sort of thing that I would mute in a stream like this, like I'm doing right now. So, and also, it's kind of a lot of bullets. I'm gonna actually trim that down a bit. But it gives us something to sort of get through. And again, it gives more time for the duplicators, which I'm starting to think should be toned down a little. It's pretty good, honestly. I really love the sound of ricochets, but not when I'm trying to talk myself. So let's trim this down. Just do pairs. Space these out a bit better. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And we made these creature bolts, right? Yes. Okay. So I think we got something going here. We got our bullets. If I want to. Mm -hmm. 
I was going to put a boulder here and say, well, that way on the way out you can destroy the bullets easily. But I still want this board to sort of be a loop. So I want us to actually exit from here. So let's actually set that exit up. Keep our Night Cyan sort of theming going. And put some yellow transporters pointing south. So now we got a nice little circle we get to run through. And that way we don't have to worry about backtracking through anything. So it's okay if there's a thousand enemies still over here. So that brings us to this last section here. And in it, let's see. Well, we can try and mix our enemies a bit. Lions and ruffians. No, we've been we've been doing a lot of that. I'll do something different. Clear that out. Let's see. Now, if this was a not fun game, we could do some invisible walls. But that's awful. Let's do. Hmm. Nothing's sticking out here. Tigers, I mean, we could do more enemies. I guess the real challenge here is that I keep trying to do all of this without any coding. Centipedes, stars... Oh, we can do conveyors, because we're in a factory. So we got our conveyors. We'll make these ones rotate clockwise. Let's see, let me count my spacing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. That'll do. So conveyors will obviously convey things. We'll do some counterclockwise ones here. Okay. So we at least got some got something going on. We can do... I don't want to do more duplicators. We can do some... Do some roughing. Whoop. Back to green. Actually, I'll keep it consistent with their intelligence and resting time stats and use the ones I've already got. Two, three, four. Let's do it this way. We're copying and pasting. I don't know why I'm like making this so regular when the sport's going to be running for like a minute and they're going to be all over the place by the time the player gets up there. Actually, get through these spots. So I'm gonna do some debug ammo here because I don't feel like saving on a different board and playing the whole thing again. Let's see. Can 
Ooh, this is still dangerous with that one shot limit. Okay. This works. Kind of. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that wasn't exactly fun. But no, I'm not happy with that. I like it visually having conveyor belts. Also, yeah, you can do dangerous things with conveyors often without trying. It's just sort of... Why not centipedes? Ooh, I know what we can do. We'll have... this is what we'll do. We'll have the player ride these conveyors. Fill this. red because it's hurty. We'll go to our terrains and we'll do a blink wall here. And again, set south. Start time is basically how long before it first goes off. Period is how long its on and off states are going to last. So we're going to make it a short period. And I don't think start time is going to matter too much because the board is going to be running for a bit. But basically, this will... Well, we'll see. Let's load it up. There we go. So now you gotta sort of time it. That I like a bit more. We definitely need to tweak those timings a little, because it was very easy to sort of just stop in front of it and then pass harmlessly past it. So let's try. I don't want it to be a gamble, so I want to compromise. Try that setting and see. Let's actually look. We'll have three different settings and see what that looks like. Yeah, so like that middle one, that that's just a guessing game. I don't feel like you have any idea if you're going to get hit by that or not. I feel like this first one, you can kind of time it. Yeah, like I even got hurt just trying to get through it. You might be better off making these a bit wider. Now I'm not a fan of how it looks, but I'll be more of a fan of how it plays. Make sure I have the right window here. No, that's too wide. You're going to get hit. Could do it like this. Yeah, so blink walls can also be dangerous, depending on where the player can be moved when they get hit, or depending on what happens exactly if they zap like one of these lines. So that's another good reason to have the transporters here. We're going to keep this area sealed off from our robots and aliens. Let me see what that looks like. Let me actually try doing this also. If we adjust the start times, we can sort of stagger them. Ah! Okay. So this is my new setup, and I've got them running at different start times with the same period. 
So now we get... Ooh, that looks good. Nice. Still got her... That, I think that seems viable. I like this. I'm happy with this. Oh, blink wall went horizontal and blocked me in. So if the blink wall destroys... Let's go back to Kev Edit here. And if we hit Control S for our stat list, this is basically the order things got placed that have stats. If the blink wall, which is going to be all the way at the end here, destroys something earlier in the list, it can kind of like desync things and horrible things can happen, which is bad. Alternatively, if you don't have a place to put the player, it can just result in an instant game over. And also one of the directions, I don't remember which offhand, is bugged. And that can also cause an instant game over, even when there is a free tile to put the player on. So be sure to test your blink walls. And I'm going to change the colors back to a gray here. Let's make this crusher thing look a bit more crushery. light gray here. No. Oop. So that's going to be the last thing we discuss. We're going to figure out what our reward is. Just trying anything visually and seeing what sticks. I can live with that. That looks horrifying enough, right? Yeah, let's actually decorate that up a little bit too with one more thing here. We're gonna get pick some red on light gray. And what do you think? Exclamation point for a warning or X for do not enter? I wanna go with X personally. Let's see. So I think we're on to something good here. I think I'm okay with these crushers. I'm going to get rid of this test ammo because I don't need that anymore. And then we get to the very end and we got to get some kind of a reward. And I'm also thinking... Part of me would love to incorporate these. I'm just gonna just gonna go right to the rewards. So first and foremost, for the time being at least, I'm gonna make this a game about getting purple keys. We might go back and change them to something more thematically appropriate with objects later on. But for now, a key is a reward, and it's a good one. And it was being mentioned in the chat way earlier on when we were first placing keys. Since I do have this nonlinear structure, and there are three different colored keys here, there is nothing stopping the player from picking up these three keys and just leaving and going to a different board. And that can absolutely screw things up, break things, skip things. It really all depends. 
So you really want to be mindful if you are using regular ZZT keys of exactly what colors are being used and if the player is really forced to pick things up or not. So actually, one more thing. I had transporters here, which, you know, fine. I'm going to actually not use transporters. I'm going to use sliders here. So that way, when the player is here, they can push them out of the way and they can just exit. But if for whatever reason they're not paying attention and don't grab the purple key, they don't have to do the whole board again. If I did a one-way transporter, then they'd have to go through it. So if I just put some sliders here, it's a bit more, it's a bit nicer. But yeah, they're definitely going to be probably lower on ammo, especially with that whole thing. Definitely going to want more health. And I mean, that's really all they used, health and ammo. So let's do that. Let's actually... Let's do some nice classic labeling. Break out the purple text. Purple. Key. Look at that. You can't tell me that's bad game design. There's an arrow. It's pointing to it. Now you know it's important. But let's also give them some health here. What color did I use? I use purple gems. I'm going to stick with that. Actually, let's do a bunch of colors. I'm going to go to blue. I'm going to shut off default colors. I'm going to place a gem, put it in my buffer, turn on the draw mode. I'm going to start moving and then hitting the color key. Even that is still not a lot of health. That is going to be like the first thing I do when I teach you how to make objects is how to give things because 10 health is not much of a reward and a giant pile of gems is going to be like a long time to collect things. Let's actually do this. Let's get... You can scatter a little. I don't feel like fixing that pattern. I'm just going to pick a color and run with it. Like, this is a lot of collecting to do, actually, and I'm not a big fan. But it does mean that the player gets some health back. How much exactly here? 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 26. So 52, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60. 62 health. That actually isn't bad. Hopefully. So we get all these. And let's congratulate them for a job well done. So we're going to F1. I'm going to hit S for scroll. Open up its stats. Edit its text. Congratulations! You have solved my killer robot factory puzzle. Good job. I'm going to keep typing these accents because that's my mic toggle button now. But scrolls, they are technically capable of doing pretty much anything an object can. So this is technically ZZT Oop here. This is how you make text. You type text. So this is going to be your very first code in a sense. So whatever you type here will appear when the scroll is touched. You'll note this dollar sign here and how it's appearing in white. That's the only kind of real formatting there is. Anything like this will appear in ZZT as white and also it will be centered. 
So we can actually do center the whole thing if we want. We'll do that. And you know what? Let's see. Good job. We can also do Control A here, just as we could with text and things. And that'll let us type special characters. Keva again. We can copy and paste, which we can't do in Planes EZT. This would take so much longer to do. Look at that. think that looks good. So let's play, let's go back here, and I think this should be our final pass for tonight. I'm going to save it our start, go back to ZZT, open up our game, and let's see what this plays like. Put our sound back on. So by the way, in the event that you're testing and you die, while you're dead, you can pop open the cheat prompt, type in health, and that'll bring you back from the dead. Uh, the game will be running in like a super fast mode, but if you then hit S to save the game, and then just load that game, it'll be fine back to normal. So that can be helpful with testing, although a lot of times if you die and you weren't really intending to die, that might mean your difficulty needs to be tweaked. Not a fan of these lions all clustering up like this. That might have been a bit excessive. If we really want to be cautious, we can do this. Yeah, this part needs to be redone later, but we're gonna leave it be for tonight. And you can also see that you don't see most of the scroll at first. So I mean, obviously you can just use the arrow keys to move it, but if we made this just like slightly smaller, we could fit it all on one screen. But there we go. We've got our purple key, and we've escaped from the killer robot factory. So let's actually go back to the title screen. I'm gonna toss a little scroll in the corner. I would generally prefer doing this in like notepad, but then I have to mess around with my stream. So I'm just gonna leave some quick notes. So let's see, what did we learn here? We learned plenty, but what did we not do well? What I don't like about this board right now is the noise. It's kind of a bit endless. Now you can shoot these bullets or get hit by them and that'll quiet things a little bit 
But that duplicator noise is kind of annoying. So I'm taking a note. Robot factory. Noisy. And I'm not a fan again of this area over here. The intelligence is kind of too high. They all cluster up a bit. We may need to dumb down these robots, at least in this corner. Robots on left have too high intelligence. Let's see. Also not a fan of having two billion gems. That needs to be replaced with an object once we start learning some code. I think that's going to be my last note for now. Gems. Too many gems. Replace with objects. All right. So I think that's going to wrap it up. We've been going on for two hours. That time absolutely flew by, which I think is good. Hopefully you weren't bored to tears. Hopefully you've all been working on stuff. If you have... Actually, I'm going to make a tweet right now. Post your ZCT boards made for this episode. Joy of ZZT here. Link that in chat. So if y'all would be so kind, you can either just do print screen in CavEdit or you can hit F12 in Zeta. That'll save a ping on its own into the your ZZT folder. And I'd really love to see what other people have been working on because I've been doing this basically silently and without feedback and I'm like, oh god, I hope people are interested in this. But we've got plenty of viewers here and I hope you all have had fun making your first and second and third, since I guess the title screen counts, CZT board. We're going to be back again next week. We'll make another portion of this hub. We'll continue to move along. I've got a couple sort of ideas for sections of what we're going to what we're going to be doing, but we'll see how things go. Uh, before I call it a night, if anybody has any questions relevant to what we've seen that they want clarified or show something real quick, let me know. I'll do that. If not, I encourage you all to either make more on your own, keep tweaking this board, do whatever you like. You don't have to wait for these streams. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to link here. This is the link to our Worlds of ZZT Discord. It's a fairly small group, but it's full of a lot of people who have been ZZTing for years and years, and they can absolutely help you out with any questions you have. They would love to do so. I'm there. I would love to do so. I think that's going to pretty much cover it all for tonight. So let me move to our little ending screen. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope to see you all again next week, and I hope we get to make some cool games together. We'll be back again on Tuesday. See ya!